G'day everybody. Well, back with the little FT17 and I have been getting quite a lot of work done. As you can see, I've got a rusted up muffler there and um, managed to get some wood and metal effects on my tools. That's coming along and it took me a while, but I eventually figured out how to get a metal worn, rusty, slightly dirty track effect without resorting to what a lot of people do is just slaver it with mud. I didn't really want that. I wanted mine looking like um, the photos that I'd seen of the museum um, FT-17s. So it's still basically pretty worn, a little bit rusty, and there's obviously dirt on it. But you get, you know, you get to see the panels. You get to see the little track links here. Now, the issue is, the um, these links are just flat. There's nothing on them, right? There's a tiny little lip on one edge you can play with. That's it. Underneath, you can get a little bit of uh, dry brushing in, and there's, there's certainly some features. But um, for the most part of it, these are just little flat slabs. So what do you do to get some sort of, you know, texture and sort of effect on them? Well, it took me a while to figure it out, but I finally got a method that I hope to be able to replicate on the other side of how I managed to get that sort of um, World War I sort of metally run over the trenches, had a bit of mud, but it fell off and then it dried kind of effect. So, let me share that with you. So here's the side of the tank that I haven't done the, um, the links on yet. And um, these are all, something's fully workable. If you've seen the previous video, the whole suspension pops up and down and does its stuff. And yeah, it's a, it's, it's, um, it's a wonderful piece of engineering. But, we want to talk about these, um, these links. Now, they... Um, they simply click together, there's no glue in here at all, which is really handy, so that you can pop them on to test everything out, and then you can just ping them off. Now, initially, I primed the whole thing in grey style res um, to give it its initial priming coat, and that worked rather well, and I even ended up with slightly dark recesses, which was the colour of the plastic, so I didn't really put that heavier coat of style res on, so that worked fine. But then when I got onto this side, um, well, after I'd done a dry fit at the end of the last video, I went, oh no, I've left the nipples on! <laughs> well, they were these tiny little injection um, spouts for every single link, and I'd forgotten to file them off. That turned out to be actually a good thing, and it was a bit of serendipity, because what I did was I rough filed all those little nipply bits off, and then uh, gave it a, a first sort of smooth over with some, some, uh, some sandpaper, and then I went, well, I was nearly going to buff it and get it all nice and smooth, like you do, and then I went, hang on. These are just flat slabs, these um, links, and what I really need to do some weathering and to make it look interesting is to have some texture, and I've got that in the roughly sanded areas. So I left that, and all I did was put a little bit of Panzer Grey on there for my life colour, and already I could start seeing a texture appear. I thought, oh, I'm onto something. This could work. So this is going to be my method. The, um, the Panzer Grey went on over the Steiner Res, where it was just sanded, and that's given me my first colour layer. Now next I'm going to do a, um, a light wash with, um, this is a, a sort of a reddy brown, a signal brown. Okay, so this is sort of a brownie colour, so that's going to go on. Then I'm going to, um, then I'm going to add a slightly darker brown and um, splash that around. Then I'm going to add a few little sort of rusty colours. Wow, rusty sort of dirty colours. And then finally, I'm going to um, dry brush over with a light colour to sort of make it look a little bit dusty or just to, just to basically lighten the colour up. So I found it's starting to get too dark. And then at the very end, I will dry brush with, um, with some silver to bring highlights in. Plus, I'll also run an enamel wash through this. I'll run a black enamel wash just to get into all those little holes and darken them. So this is going to be my method, and this seemed to work in um, on the other side. So let's see if I can replicate it. So I've got my signal bron. It's just sort of a colour that I chose, which is just a you know a nice sort of what I thought was sort of a muddy type colour. And I've got a fairly wet brush, and I'm going to just slather this on. Alright. Now, get away with this with a live colour. You probably should thin it. You, know, you should have mixed it up and thinned it. But um, live colour is kind of useful because you can go straight on 
you really have to actually do much with it. It's kind of magic stuff. I've, I've found I'm going to be extremely lazy with it. And uh, I can just slap it around. And if I've got a bit of water on my brush, well, it thins with water beautifully. No issues at all. Don't need to mix up any isopropyl bloody alcohol or anything. No, I don't have to get any thinners. So even though it's on a sort of a bit thick there, I'm not too worried because falling down in the cracks is not going to be an issue. And I don't want this perfect and even. Not at all. Right, so type in more. Don't forget to do the end ones. Oh, that's a little bit too much. It's okay, we can just work that in. So this is my method. Sloppiness. Sloppiness works for me. So already this stuff is sort of drying. Even though it is raining here today and there's high humidity, it, um, it's still sort of warm. It's around, you know, 20 degrees C. Okay, so that's my first layer. And again, we're not trying to be pretty. In fact, we're trying to be the opposite of pretty. Just slap this stuff on. So that now needs to dry. It won't take long, it'll be a few minutes. Then I'll come back, I'll do the other side because we'll have to paint both sides to get that sort of effect. There we go, some time's elapsed and I've got both sides washed with that lighter brown, which is the first... Um, first colour after the primer and the um, basically the German grey that I used there. But essentially you could just start with the primer and then put on a nice sort of brown, muddy brown. So that's giving me the first effect of what Now moving on, I'm going to go for a slightly darker brown. Right, and I'm just using this one, Grot Brown. Um, it's just a just more of a, a darker woody sort of brown. And what we're going to do is a, um, a technique using some of these. These are um, these are sort of these tweezers that kind of clamp. You know, got some of these. Well, you don't have to use this, but this is this is my way of doing it. And um, and you need a bit of sponge. Now, luckily, I um, I have these sanding sponges from 3M. If you've ever seen my videos, I love these because they sort of conform to any shape, and you can and they're nice and fine, and um, they they really buff everything up beautifully. But they also have another purpose for me, anyway, is that I can rip a bit off, make sure it's all kind of um, not regular and kind of broken, which it sort of is anyway. So there we go, sort of all broken up. And if I attach that to one of these little clampy things, I've got a sponge. Now you could use this for chipping, a lot of people do, sort of chipping technique. But um, it also works well for doing things like tracks with this, this technique. At least that's what I found. So, I get some brown on there, right? but I don't want it that wet. So I lose most of it until it's basically almost like a dry brush. And then, splatter it on. And randomness is what this is all about. Again, a bit more on there. Dab it off until it's... So it's almost sort of dry brushing, but we're dry brushing and sponging. I don't know what you call this technique. Dry sponging? <laughs> yes. Is it sponge worthy? You remember that? You ever watch Seinfeld? Is he sponge worthy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I won't talk any more about that. I get enough trouble. The R rated things I say on my videos. Oh, there we go. Everything's everywhere. Doesn't matter. Now, the beautiful thing is when you're doing armour, is nothing has to be too perfect in a lot of ways. There are some techniques and things where you really want to be spot on, but what I'm doing here, it, um, it's all random. And it's just what happens. What happens is going to be good. So, um, we're just looking in effect. Now, the other beautiful thing about what I'm doing now is that's already touched dry. It's really not coming off and it's not going anywhere. So it allows me to flip over straight away. And I can now start working on the, um, on the other side. So again, now yes, I'm, I'm actually using the paint in the cup because it's a bit thicker. And... Um, it works really well for this because all I want is dabs. And remember, if you're ever doing the little spongy thing, if you're doing chips, is you rotate 
and you rotate your sponge. Otherwise, every single mark and chip looks identical. And that's not what you're after, is it? They won't be uniform in life. So again, now this is simulating um, probably the more wet mud that's um, dry. Well, of course, wet mud dry. What are you trying to say, Harry Dini? Talking through your bum as usual. No, um, this is sort of areas that have caked mud. And, and that's what's happening here. So we had a lighter, a lighter colour, which was just sort of general wear and tear. And now we have this darker one. Um, there's probably no reason for any of these. They just work. They just, this is what I ended up with. So there we go. So there's that. Now, the beauty of my method and the wonderful part about this is we don't have to wait. There's no drying time required whatsoever for what we're going to do next. Rock browns next, yes, which is sort of a ready one. Okay, so. And I found last time I didn't need to put the various ready colours on the inside because they basically, you hardly see what's going on there anyway. So, making sure there's nothing on here to contaminate my paint. There isn't. I'll give this a good dip in the rock brown. And again, work it off until it's just... Now this one I will use sparingly. But not every link needs it. Not every link deserves it. All right, and rotate, rotate, rotate. Okay, so. Some on the edges, some around there, some on the sides. Okay, so there's the next layer, which is slightly red. Okay, um, actually what I used last time is I even went with a little bit of this. Some metal airy stuff, which is a even redder. Oh, look at that. Look how red that is. So um, I actually use this as well. So again, until you've got virtually nothing, and I'm going to use this slightly different portion of the sponge. This one, again, the brighter the colour, the less we're going to use, because it really will be very obvious. So this one's just a bit of a highlighty ready thing. So there we go, that's that one. Okay, so that's all starting to look like a big mess, <laughs> and that's what we want. And just like when I've done track links and other videos, it looks garish until you get to your final, um, your final layers. Now, this is where we're going to use a bit of buffing. Now, I will have to go and wash my sponge now for this one because we're going down to such a light colour that I need to wash the sponge out. I need to keep it slightly wet, which will give all of this just enough time. To, um, to dry off, because it won't take long at all. That'll be dry in mere seconds. All right, so talk amongst yourselves. Smoke them if you got them. <laughs> I'll be back in a sec. Right, now that's had a little bit of time when I washed my sponge, and then I thought, what am I washing sponges for? I've got bloody heaps on here. This is just an old, old worn out um, sanding sponge. So, you know, I've got heaps to use. So I'll grab a new one, and I've really feathered it out quite a lot. But it needs to be... A bit wet to start with okay needs to be a bit wet for this one for what we're going to do so again plenty of the color lose it until it's really only splattering until and away we go now I'm only aiming for the center this time Okay, so that looks horrible, doesn't it? Yes, 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 it'll it'll all come good shortly. It really will. It'll come good and it'll start to work very, very soon. So, probably need a bit more water. And I'm going to work this until it basically almost disappears. Hopefully I'm not losing the colours that I've put in underneath. Okay. All 
All right. So again, it seems like well, we've probably got more paint on the paper, but this is starting to come together. All right. This is a point where I will have to wait for it to dry because I've used quite a bit of a bit of water on my sponge this time, because I really just slathered on this this um, lighter colour um, to see what would. Uh, you know, to, I, when I did it previously just to see what happened and I found that as it dried it sort of dissipated and disappeared into there and that's exactly what I want because the next couple of steps are going to um, enhance and refine this. So let's just leave that for a while, I'll probably leave that a good 10-20 minutes till it really is dry and then we'll come back. Here we go, it's about 10 minutes later and that is pretty well dry. That's all dry to the touch, nothing's coming off, and that's what I wanted. Okay, so now we can be very careful and go to our next stage. I'm going to use some silver. Now I noticed the track links that I saw in the museum um, tanks had a lot of metal showing and were very worn. And that was the thing, even though this is inside, this is stuff that isn't really caked in mud, this is maybe there's mud dried and it's sort of embedded into the metal and there's a patina. Uh, you know, that's what I'm after. So I want a whole lot of silver on a brush this time and lose it. Oh, this is typical dry brushing. And then I want to start getting all the highlights. Okay, so again, oh, I didn't have much in the cap there, did I? Again, wet my brush, lose all of it and dry brush and it's probably going to just look really shiny on the camera but believe me this is actually going to work very well and that it's going to highlight all the edges and it's going to give the, everything a bit of a metallic sheen which is exactly what I'm after without making them look silver. So if I actually get that off the light a bit, you can start to see that it is starting to work. Right, so edges. With the edges I can have probably a bit more silver because I really want I really want those edges. Now I used to use my um, Tamiya masking uh, masking my makeup kit for this sort of thing and it's still good. It's just that I had the silver paint that I bought to um, to paint my new port, which will be coming up soon, a nice little 136 scale new port, and I found it actually worked really well for doing this as well. Now if I put too much on, I can use a tiny dab of water to remove it. So I probably got a little bit too zealous here, but that's okay, it's coming along. It's a bit of working, like a lot of this stuff, it's all well to say that you're doing it, but it's very subjective and essentially working with tiny amounts of paint and it's more probably up to the artist to um, to say well that's enough or I add a bit more and you can only do this by sort of having a feel for it and giving it a try see how you go you know uh, I suppose lucky I've done lots of this sort of stuff over the years and um, you know lots of painting and drawing and artwork sort of was my life so I suppose I might have a feel for this I don't know or I'm just kind of lucky and I don't give a shit and I just throw it together and see what happens. I hear those cows, that's cows. Got a couple of calves out the window, I'll show you a photo of that in a sec. Not everybody has bloody calves running around their bloody uh, their window sills. No. Give you that again to that, just a sec. Okay. How are we going here? Alright, so what I'm doing is looking for those edges. I'm actually not so much dry brushing here as I'm painting that on. So I want that. But there's really not a lot of paint on my, my brush, so... This is sort of another witty dry brushy technique. Again, I'm just looking for highlights. So, you know, I just want to get those edges. So you can see there's, um, I don't know how much of it comes up on camera, but there's, um, those edges are all nice. Here it's dull. See there? Well, there you can see it. Pretty? Not pretty. And that's exactly what we're going for here.
All right, well, that's looking very silvery now. <laughs> See, it's that very shiny on camera, isn't it? Yeah, but believe me, when this dries, and um, especially when we do the next step, it'll lose a lot of that, and the entire effect will reveal itself. So um, that's what we want. So, again, if I felt I've gone a bit too crazy, I can just use a little bit. Now, the, the good thing here, I think you might be able to see it. You see that texture starting to form, see? Well, it's starting to form, the texture's starting to show. Because way back when, I left that sanded area unsmooth. I left it kind of a little bit rough. That now is giving those little ridges and little shines. And as the silver paint dries and disappears, because the silver paint's just going to disappear, you won't, you won't see it as much, really. It'll, um, like even some sections here that have kind of dried, you, um, you really just see the, the other effects. Okay, so what we need to do now is really let that dry. That's got to dry solid. So I'm going to go away, make a cup of tea, pat the wombat. <laughs> well, actually, no, I've got to go and give Bass the cat some fish. It's her birthday today. Yeah, she's two years old. Yeah, the little old Bass the cat. She's a whole two years old and it's been pissing down raining all day, so she's grumpy as all hell. When I went to feed her fish before, she just bit me. She just, you know, sunk her fangs into me. Look at that. Yeah, it's a mortal wound. All right, well, um, I'll let this dry and then we'll come back for the final stages of this entire weathering effect. Final stages. Now, what I'm going to do is make up a um, wash using half of this and thinner. So this is a dark wash. It's now my meat one. Dark brown wash for green vehicles, which I've used before. And um, I'll just thin it down 50-50 with... Um, with some enamel thinner, which gives me a fairly thick wash, but it's what I want because, as you see, everything's fairly bright here. But that was um, that was what I wanted. Now, it's a matter of fairly liberally slathering on the wash, and there's no skill required here whatsoever. The wash goes on fairly liberally, and it's really for that those spaces between the links, but it's also going to tone everything down because we've um, got some bright colours there and the silver is pretty shiny but that's okay this will take it all down and finally give me the result that I want so that's it, that's all there is to it, this is basically the last stage what you can do here is, you know, you can always touch up in that if it's, um, if it's still a bit too bright, run the wash again if it, um, the wash has taken too much off you would um, just go back and add a bit more silver. Now again, it's all bright and shiny. So let's let this try and we'll come back in a sec. Give it about 10 minutes and that's pretty well dry. This stuff dries pretty quickly using the, um, using this. I'm using some Tamiya X20 yeah, which works really well. It's got some secret ingredients in it probably, probably something highly toxic. But um, there you go, once it's dry, well you've still got, see you still got all the shininess, that's there. Um, but it recedes, the, um, the wash has receded right in, and, um, oops, I've got thinners on my fingers there. Careful, careful, Harry, do you'll bugger it. Um, and it basically, you can see the pattern underneath, there's all those splodges that we put on, all right, but um, the overall effect has toned right down. Still catches the light, and it still gets that sort of silvery look, but, um, you know, in the shadows you can see it's dark. So you get a bit of everything. At various angles it'll be shiny, and then at other angles it'll be sort of matte. So it'll look fairly realistic. Well, I hope so. You know, that's my, my hope. I've, I've created something that looks like a thing that I wanted to make. And that's what it is. I started out with a, I wanted it to look more like the museum tanks rather than the, the, the muddy photos you see. And, and quite a lot of these FT-17s just ran around the grass and the tundra and, uh, you know, they were used in the, in the Spanish War and all over the place. So um, there's lots of different things uh, and lots of different ways that you could uh, depict these um, track links. Anyhow, that's how I've done mine. I'm pretty happy with that. I'll leave it here. So that's, um, that's goodbye from Australia and it's Huru from Harry Houdini. Mm -hmm.